this tutorial looks at the reactions of group 1 elements with water, looks at the word and symbol equations, and looks at the similarities and differences between these reactions. You'll learn that group 1 elements are known as the alkali metals and why they're stored under oil. You'll need to describe the reaction of lithium, sodium and potassium with water and learn some of the observations. So we're looking at group 1. Group 1 is this vertical column of elements here. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium. They're all in group 1 because they all have one electron in their outer shell. And because they all have one electron in their outer shell, they've all got similar chemical reactions. I recommend that you use YouTube to look at the videos of the reactions of these elements of group 1 with water and see how they are different and how they are the same. Sodium, for example, when it reacts with water, floats on the surface, showing it's less dense than water. It fizzes, showing that it's giving off a gas. The gas is, in fact, hydrogen. Sometimes bursts into flame with a yellow flame. Eventually, the sodium which has rolled into a ball and skated around on the surface, dissolves. And it dissolves into the water, leaving a solution that turns litmus purple, showing an alkaline solution of sodium hydroxide. Because sodium reacts with water so vigorously, and also because it reacts with oxygen in the air, it's kept under oil. You'll probably see the reactions of lithium, sodium and potassium with water. They're all quite similar in that all the metals uh, skate around on the surface. Lithium doesn't melt into a ball, but sodium and potassium do. All three of them dissolve, producing hydrogen and making an alkaline solution of the metal hydroxide. Differences are that sodium and uh, potassium form into a ball because of the heat of the reaction. Sodium occasionally gives a yellow flame, but potassium gives the fastest reaction with a lilac coloured flame and also often crackles and pops. The other three elements are rubidium, cesium and francium. Rubidium and cesium you're only likely to see when you're at university. These are very reactive with water and can be explosive. Francium is incredibly rare and you're unlikely to see any sample of it. You have to be aware then of some of the observations and inferences that you can make from the reactions with water. Lithium is fairly easy to cut, tarnishes fairly slowly in the air and when put onto water floats, fizzes or effervesces and dissolves producing the gas hydrogen and leaving an alkaline solution of lithium hydroxide. Sodium cuts fairly easily but tarnishes more quickly than lithium. Again it floats, but this time melts into a ball as it fizzes and skates around the surface, sometimes giving a yellow flame. But again, the gas is hydrogen and the solution which remains is alkaline of sodium hydroxide. Potassium is the fastest, most reactive of the three metals. It is very, very soft and easy to cut and tarnishes very rapidly. It floats on the water, melts into a ball, fizzes and crackles and pops and skates rapidly around the surface, dissolving very quickly with a lilac flame and producing this gas, hydrogen and leaving behind an alkaline solution of potassium hydroxide. These metals are known as the alkali metals because they all make alkaline solutions when they react with and dissolve in water. Here's a past paper question on this topic. Sodium, potassium and lithium are group 1 metals. Write down the name of one other group 1 metal. Well, you could look at the periodic table. Let's go for rubidium. Note it says the name, not the symbol. And it says that sodium stored under oil. Explain why. Well, this is because... Sodium reacts with... water and oxygen from the air.
The group 1 metals react when put into water. Look at the table. All three reactions give off the same gas. Write down the name of this gas. Okay, well the gas is hydrogen. It says, look at the observations for sodium. Well, it melts, skates around the surface of the water. The gas is given off and an alkaline solution is made. It says, write down the name of the substance that makes the solution alkaline. Well, we know this to be sodium hydroxide. And it says, write down the order of the reactivity of the sodium, potassium and lithium with water. Use the table to help you. Well, you should know that... Uh, these metals get more reactive as you go down the group, but when you look at the time taken to react, you can see that the uh, potassium is the fastest, followed by the sodium, and the lithium is the slowest, so the most reactive would be potassium, then sodium, and least reactive would be lithium. And there's the answers. You should really, if it asks for the name of a compound, give the name of the compound rather than the symbol. But it does, as you can see here, allow you to write the symbols here and here. The next thing you need to be able to know is the word equations and the symbol equations for the reaction of these elements with water. For the symbol equations at foundation level, you'll probably be given a partial equation and either asked to balance it or asked to complete it. Because the chemical reactions between these elements and water are very similar, so the word equations are very similar also. In each case, the metal reacts with water to make the metal hydroxide and hydrogen. In terms of symbol equations, you're meant to know the symbol equation uh, because it's on the specification on the previous slide. But let's have a go at uh, writing this. Lithium would be Li. Water would be H2O. Lithium hydroxide would be LiOH, and hydrogen would be H2. But at the moment, this doesn't balance. We've got one lithium on the left, one lithium on the right, that's fine. But we've got two hydrogens on the left and three hydrogens here on the right. So we need to have more hydrogens on the left. We need to have two H2O. But now we've got two oxygens on the left. We've only got one oxygen here on the right. Therefore, we need to have two lithium hydroxides. That's given us two lithiums on the right now, but we've only got one lithium on the left, so we need to put two lithiums there. I think that's about it. Let's just check. On the left, we've got two lithiums. We've got on the right two lithiums. On the left, we've got two times two is four hydrogens. Here, we've got two times one is two, plus two, four hydrogens. And here, we've got two oxygens and two oxygens. It now balances. The others would have very similar symbol equations. So for sodium, the only thing that we would change is we'd have two Na's plus two H2O, giving two NaOH plus H2. And for the potassium, two K plus two H2O, giving 2KOH plus H2. Knowing the properties of lithium, sodium and potassium, you might be asked to predict what the properties are for rubidium or cesium or francium further down the group. Well, the melting point seems to get lower as you go from lithium to sodium to potassium, so the melting point of rubidium would be lower still. As they become easier to cut as you go down the group, rubidium you would think would be very, very soft. The speed of tarnishing would be extremely rapid, faster still than potassium. And its reaction with water would be potentially explosive because it would be even more reactive than the potassium. You need to be able to explain why group 1 elements have got similar properties. The key to the similar reactions of group 1 elements lies in the similar atoms that the elements have. All of the atoms of the elements in group 1 have one outer electron. And the atom becomes more stable if it can lose this electron. Because the elements lose that electron in similar ways with similar chemical reactions, 
their reactions are very similar. The only thing that differs is the ease with which they lose that electron and therefore the reactivity of the metal.